Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gamer to the Com video. Let's discuss graphics card news, shall we? We've got a few bits to discuss, actually. Quite a bit's happened over the last few days, but I've just been so bloody busy. We're going to start out with NVIDIA, and then we're going to move on to AMD. So, first of all, we're going to discuss the Telsat K80. Now, just for your FYI, this card is primarily not aimed at gaming, unlike the AMD card that we're going to discuss in just a moment. This card is basically used for high-end compute functionality, servers, that type of thing. To give you an idea, it's twice as fast as the K40, so it's going to hit 2.9 teflops of double precision computing power, which is absolutely ludicrous. It's going to feature two Kepler GK210s, um, with a total of 4,992 four, nine, nine, CUDA cores. 416 TMUs, texture mapping units, and 96 ROPs, and are going to contain 24 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 384-bit interface, which means the card's going to have about 480 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and as I said, that's with 24 gigabytes of RAM, which is mad, absolutely ridiculous, and considering the the uh, K80 is also going to support GPU boost, plus it's 10 times faster than a CPU in most in pretty much a multitude of different applications. Now, the speed variance does differ depending on the application. For example, we could go with, let's say, uh, DGEM, um, which, which is a DGEMM, and it's almost about 9 times faster. Mm -hmm. Um, but the slowest application basically is around four times faster than the CPU, and the fastest ones are almost, well, 10 plus. In fact, it's actually ranging on to 12 times to maybe even 13 times faster. Now, what CPU is it? Is it like an i5? Is it like an i7? What they're using? And actually, they're using a 12 core E5 2697V2 running at 2.7 gigahertz, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and running a distribution of Linux, which is a CentOS 6.2. Absolutely madness. Craziness. 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 So as I said, that is focused primarily upon high end servers. Um, but we've also got some news from AMD. Now, I have reported quite a bit of news from AMD. The other day, of course, I mentioned about the whole stack to die thing with the high bandwidth memory, 640 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, blah, blah, blah. So, I have missed this bit out. Um, we know that the next generation GPU is going to be called Fiji. And we didn't really have any proof of it being called Fiji, but now there's a latest entry in Zebua. Now, that's an, a database of import and export data which has been really helpful back in the Maxwell era when they were sending out, like, test cards to manufacturers. In other words, you know, NVIDIA was sending them out to, let's say, uh, EVGA. So, basically, AMD are currently finishing off the C880 model, so C880, and that's supposedly going to be the backbone of the R9390 series. Now... We're not too familiar about this, but we do know that there's going to be Iceland, Tonga, and Fiji. Now, Tonga, of course, has already half been uh, released, but what we are now seeing is there's going to be preparing three graphics cards processors for the R9 300. The first is the Fiji, which is going to be a direct competitor to the GM204. There's going to be the Tonga XT, which is a fully-fledged 384-bit model, and then finally, there's going to be the Tonga XT, which is supposedly going to be originally planned for the Radeon R9-285X, but they basically said it's going to be um, holding fire and they're going to release it for something a bit different. So all, either way, this card is going to be insane. But once again, next couple of months, we're going to know a lot more. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it somewhat informative. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.